My name is Carol McCarthy, I'm from Solace, and I'm here today to talk about a really important initiative for you, for employees, um, called Skills to Advance, which we're leading on. Um, we launched it last September, and we're working on it in collaboration with the 16 education and training boards in Ireland. So you're probably familiar here with Cork Education Training Board? Yes. Yeah. yeah, very good. And can I just have a show of hands of how many employees, is it mostly employees we have in the audience today? Yeah, okay. So you know how important your skills development is to your career, and you know this is a really important initiative to help you in that respect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk down through what is Skills to Advance, who is for, why it's important for SMEs. SMEs are small, medium-sized enterprises. Is anyone here working in the SME industry, in, in sector at the moment? Okay, anyone? Okay, so SMEs are very important to, to I suppose, the, the, the employment sector in Ireland, and I'm going to show you some very in interesting statistics in that respect as well. What are the benefits for SMEs? How much will it cost, which is, I suppose, what everybody is thinking about with, with, with training initiatives, the cost involved, and what are the next steps if you're interested in, in, in going forward? So essentially what it is, it's an initiative that is helping business to upskill and reskill their staff. So you will work as an employer, an employer will actually work in, in collaboration with Cork ETB to do one of two things. The first is identify the skill development needs of their employees. And sometimes smaller companies, they don't have HR resources. So really it's about getting in the resources to do that and the support to do that, to help people to identify what the skill needs are. And then once you do that, you deliver targeted skills training, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to show you a short two minute video that tells you really all about skills to advance. The future of work is changing. Every industry, business and job is evolving as technology reshapes our working lives. New business models, automation and international competition all present risks and challenges. While previous generations enjoyed a job for life, we must take more control of our own working futures. Further education and training will play a particular role in assisting those in lower skilled jobs to upskill and reskill. We believe that a proactive approach to employee development is central to the future success of our workers, businesses, industries, and regions. So we've set out an ambitious policy framework to help establish a national culture of upskilling and reskilling, encourage businesses to actively invest in staff development, and ensure a supply of quality, relevant, and accessible courses. At the heart of the framework is a new initiative called Skills to Advance. It will offer valuable skills development opportunities to those in lower skilled jobs working in small and medium sized enterprise in vulnerable sectors and will be accessed by one of three routes. Deliver directly to employees, helping grow and evolve skills to advance their work options through business engagement, developed in consultation with individual small and medium sized businesses to address the particular needs of their workforce as part of regional development to help get ahead of vulnerabilities and strong emerging opportunities in regions and industries across Ireland. We plan that by 2021, over 40,000 workers will be taking part, increasing their resilience and capabilities. 4,500 SMEs will benefit from improved productivity and innovation. Ireland will enhance its global competitiveness and its workers will be more resilient and capable. With a wide range of positive benefits for workers, businesses, the economy and wider society. Skills to advance. If you are interested in taking part, please contact your local education and training board. Okay, that gives you kind of a flavour of what Skills to Advance is all about. But essentially if we look at the two, the two, sec the two areas that are in 
that, that, that it, it is targeting. First of all, Skills to Advance is about upskilling employees in small, medium-sized enterprise, but particularly in certain criteria. And those criteria are people in lower skilled jobs and or 50 plus and or at risk of displacement. So there's certain criteria that, that people are eligible to go, to go through and, and take part in Skills to Advance. We're also looking at sectors and I suppose sectors really are, there's certain sectors where there's lower skilled employees and there's seven of those sectors where lower skilled employees are working. But it's really about investing in those sectors and looking at what emerging opportunities as the video is talking about are in those sectors and also adapting, helping industry to adapt to changing work practices and technology and markets changing. For instance, globalization, we've got Brexit on, on, on the agenda at the moment. So all of these things really are helping Companies need help in, in, in targeting good skills training to help their staff to deal with all of these changes. So the, the, the way forward here is working with your local ETB and when you partner up with the local ETB, they will go through that criteria for you and, 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 and indicate to you uh, how, how skills to advance um, fits in with your, with your business. So the occupations that we're looking at in this, this um, initiative really are Lower skilled employees, typically elementary, operative, sales administration, caring, and other service occupations. We also know that the workforce, there's an aging population, you know, an aging um, population in a lot of the workforce, and it's looking as well at them um, and, and trying to target them to help them to upskill as well and, and, and retrain and, and, and maybe look at new, new career paths. The sectors that we're looking at, um, I suppose, the, as I mentioned, the highest number of lower skilled workers are in seven sectors. They are the wholesale and retail trade, um, industry, which would be typically manufacturing, accommodation and food service, health and welfare, construction, agriculture, and transportation and storage. So all these sectors will be targeted through this initiative. Um, and you can see that you know, there, there, there will be a lot of jobs in there. Is anyone working in any of those in, in sectors at the moment? Yeah, Very good, yeah. Oh, very good. Excellent. That's great. That's great. So it's very, it's very targeted to help you really to skill up in your in, in your job and to help you to to, to progress. Um, and looking at all of these um, possible occupations that you could you could be you could possibly be in. Why is skills to advance important for SMEs? And again, just to let you know, SMEs are small, medium-sized enterprise. If we take a look at this slide and we look at the statistics, we can straight away see that over 99% of businesses in Ireland are actually small to medium-sized enterprises, and they're employing 68% of the workforce. So that's a very high statistic when you think about it. We hear an awful lot about multinationals, um, but it's actually the, the, the small, medium-sized enterprises are the biggest employers in the country. So that's why this, this initiative is very much targeted towards that, that the, the small to medium sized enterprise, okay? We also know that lower skilled employees who are in the most need of training are the least likely to receive training. And when we look at the number of employees with certain qualifications in the country, we can see straight away that over 950,000 employees are at levels four and five. The NFQ is the National Framework of Qualifications, and Levels 4 and 5 is the Leaving Cert qualification, okay? Level 3 would be the Junior Cert, and we can see that 200 and just over 277,000 people are employed, uh, um, have, sorry, have qualifications of Level 3 and below. So that's quite a significant number of the workforce. I think it's in and around under, below Level 4 or 5, nearly 43% of the workforce. So you can see that there is a real need to help people to scale up and to improve their qualifications and their, their prospects in, in, their, in their jobs. And this initiative is really geared towards that. We also know that the smaller a company, the less likely an employee is to receive training. So again, you know, we have extensive research that has gone into this initiative and we have come up, we, we know these are the, the, the conclusions of that research. So that's quite significant. There's a lot of employees here, or employees here today, but we do know that the more likely to participate in training if companies, if your company actually initiates the training, okay? So that's really important to know as well. 
that your company gets on board and helps you to, to engage in this training, this skills to advance initiative. Why is it important for SMEs? Number one, it's responding to the changing need, nature of jobs and skills. We know that jobs and skills are constantly changed. You know that yourself, and you need to constantly skill up and help yourself to take advantage of new opportunities in your own company and to develop yourself. We know that. So it's very important from that perspective. It supports the development of transferable skills. Transferable skills are the skills that you can take from one job to the other. They're typically soft skills. Um, interpersonal skills, communication skills, team working, helping to work you know, in difficult <coughs> situations, problem solving, um, customer care is huge in this area as well. So all these skills are really important and this, this initiative will help people with those transferable skills. Meeting the skill needs, employers meeting the needs of their employees. Everybody needs to continually skill up no matter what job you're in. Um, and I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, you know, you do, you need to be continually skilling yourself up. And it's very important that employees focus on the skill development of their employees to help them to do that. Particularly in the current climate where there's increasing challenges and pressures at work, and that you need particularly those, those transferable skills to be dealing with, with, with all of those challenges. It supports and enhances the productivity in SMEs. We know from the research that if a company invests in training and development, and then they increase their training days by 1%, there's a 3% increase in productivity. And we all know companies like to know about the bottom line, and does it make a difference? And yes, it does, so that's really good. And then it helps to drive regional development in, the, in, in, in this region, in Cork, in Munster, in the country. So it's all about helping the individual, at the individual level, for their skills, then you know, looking at the company and helping the company to move forward, but then helping the country as well through proper skills development, you know, with all the challenges that technology is putting on the, you know, on on, on work, um, changes in technology, you have globalization, you have outsourcing of jobs, you have Brexit, you have all of these um, factors that are influencing the need to, to develop skills. So I suppose if we just look at a visual about how, how it all works. If you develop your workforce, you help to retain and recruit staff. And again, we're working in an environment now where people are moving around a lot. The economy is doing quite well. There's good opportunities there. But if you invest in your staff, there's a greater likelihood that they will stay with you and they will develop with you and you will keep them, who at the end of the day are your greatest asset that you have in an organization. You help to identify skill needs. And when you do that and when you invest, you help the company then to increase its productivity, becomes more competitiveness, profits are good, and you, you, you support business growth, which then goes around again to help and develop your workforce. The interesting thing as well is that when employees partake in training, and I'll use the customer, customer services example, there's an awful lot of knowledge that employees have. And when they engage in training, all that knowledge bubbles up through the training. And oftentimes then companies can make changes that can lead to big increases in the way they did their productivity levels, you know. So it's really important. There's there's not just you know development for the person. There's constant improvements for the company as well because, you know, it's about people bringing their knowledge and their their intelligence to play in the success of their own company, and you're part of that. So what type of training is provided? Well, first of all, as I said at the start, um, there's support there's support available. For, for somebody to go into a company and help them to identify what their skills needs are, okay? So when that is done, training needs to be relevant to the business needs of a particular organization. And again, in collaboration here locally with Cork ETB, companies have the opportunity to do that. We all know that time is precious now, that you know, it's, you know, we've got demands at work, so there is flexible options now available through blended learning options, nighttime, option, nighttime training options, so there's all these new flexible accessible training opportunities available that would fit around the business's work schedule, and that's really, really important for business. Courses that are responding to the changing nature of jobs and skills, you know, again, jobs are changing, so New, new programs need to be developed to help people to develop skills to meet with those changes. And just one note there, training to meet legislative requirements is not included in skills to advance, okay? So, how do you access training? What, what, what do you do next? Um, 
The first thing is that the small and medium sized enterprises, business, businesses in, that, in, 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 in SMEs, they can link up with their local ETB representative, and I have that information here today, um, to help them to identify people in their lower skill jobs or at risk of displacement within their companies, okay? And they partner up with that then, and that's a process that they work through. Also, employees can also access training directly through skills to advance through their local ETB. So they can go directly, you can go directly to your local ETB, Cork ETB, and I'll give you the information here if you would like to look at well, what's available for me in this, okay? So the good news is that support can be provided for up to 70% of training costs. So for, for a business that will be availing of that, it's essential that they release staff, okay? That's part of that. Um, but you can, as I say, you can go to your local ETB and discuss what would be available for you under this, under this initiative. Um, and this training is supported through the National Training Fund, so there is a fund there available for that, okay? The local Cork ETB contact is Valerie Cowman, and she's based out in the Cork Training Centre, and her details are there, so I also have some, some handouts here, which I'll give you if, if you'd like to get those details. So that's it. I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'd like to ask you: Would you have you any questions for me that I could that I could answer for you? Approaching the ETB yourself, if you want to get it, if you're mm. not attached to a business, what what would be what would be entailed in, in that independent learning to you to be able to just give me some sort of description to it? You know, like if you wanted to do certain, give me an example now. What you'd like to do? Would you like to do to avail of what programs the ETB have? Is yes, it? You, you, would you go through Valerie to find yeah. out and she'd send you the resources? Yeah, I think what would be good is that you can go through Valerie and you could come in and meet with somebody yeah. and maybe sit down and have a consultation to see what would suit you at an individual level, what you would like to... So you'd look at what, what, is, what is on offer at the moment yeah. and then you'd look at skills to advance and you'd see the criteria for that sure. and what would be available for you. So it would really be to call in, to first of all call up and get the right person to make contact mm -hmm. And call in then and have a meeting and, and look because what's important in this as well is it's about your career as well you know what i mean and cork etb offer career guidance services as well um which is you know cork etb have a wide range of offerings available this is one of them skills to advance is one of them um but, but they have other offerings as well and career guidance is one of them so you could meet with somebody maybe from the career guidance and they would talk you through then about where where you're at yeah where you would like to go and what training would bridge those gaps for you and how you could develop yourself. Yeah, because I'm, I'm actually out in the Cork Training Centre at the moment studying an evening course All right. in training and development. So yeah. it's just a complement mid degree. Yeah. And it's a fantastic um, setting. Fantastic, yeah, yeah it's yeah, great, it's isn't great. it? I mean, the, the course is the level six that I'm doing and it's, it's condensed, but the facilitators are fantastic. She's yeah. amazing, the instructor. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, and it, it's just like I've never been out in that session before either. Yeah. And I don't think it's, it's, it gets enough publicity. Yeah. Like this, this great learning facility for it's a lot a of great, adults yeah. and young people and older adults. And uh, it's not really listed off as one of the colleges in Cork. Um, it's just something else I'm involved in. It's only ever CIT or UCC or. Yeah. You know, those colleges are mentioned and yeah. the Cork Training Centre doesn't get a mention. So yeah. Well, I'd certainly take that feedback back as well, and we might use you in some of our, our marketing promotions, you know. <laughs> but it's lovely to hear that. That's really good. And it is, it's a great facility out there. And the other, the other, uh, the PLC colleges and all the other yeah. um, offerings that Cork ETB have Very to offer. Accessible as well. Yeah. You just get on the bus and two or five takes to ride out. Yeah. And it's very accessible. And it's, it's in the heart of the suburb community, but I'm learning an awful lot from that course. Yeah. It's it starts to train me to be a trainer. Oh, brilliant. With my degree. So yeah. I mean I'm definitely gonna link in with the with the career advice because there's no harm getting that either. Yeah, that's great. It's great. So you what you could do, they're actually based um in the court training centre as well. There's a number of them in there so yeah exactly there so you can you can call in on monday and you can make an appointment and have a chat and that could be taken that there. brilliant that that's great that's fantastic yeah, and i give you some brochures as well okay. that's great thank you. what's your own name erin erin thank you so much thank that was so. that was a lovely input anybody else with any questions no they're all very clear of it yeah thank you very much